Hello friends, we're going to cover some basic spreadsheet formatting. Let's learn. Let's see how we can pretty up the worksheet from our previous exercise with a little bit of formatting. So let's click in cell A1 and let's boldface the word quarter that's in this cell. So what I can do is just go up here while I'm in the home ribbon and click on the boldface B. I'm sure that you've seen that in other programs before. And not surprisingly, we see the contents of A1 is now in boldface. Well, what if I want to quickly boldface all of the cells from A1 through D1? Well, you can click your mouse, hold down an A1, drag all the way to D1. I've now selected a range of cells, so any formatting that I perform will be applied to all of the cells in this selection. Now if I click on bold again, what it does first is it turns off the bold face in A1, but if I click it one more time, all the values in the range that I've selected are bold. Nice! Now you can even do this with a non-adjacent selection, so let me show you how we could select A1 through D1, and also A2 through A6, and then just click bold once. So I'm going to Command Z or Control Z to undo. That removes the bold that I just added. I'm going to click and drag from A1 through D1, then I'm going to hold down my command key, or on Windows you want to hold down the control key, and while you're holding down that key, click in A2, hold down the mouse, and drag to A6. See that? You've just made a non-adjacent selection. The command key on the Mac, the control key on Windows will allow you to do that, so now that I've selected my column headers and my row headers, I'm going to click on B for bold, and ho oh, ho, all of them bold with just one click. Nice! Now we can also make a rectangular selection, so let's go ahead and format these numbers so that they have dollar signs and commas. So I'm going to click in cell B2 while I hold down the mouse. I'm going to drag to cell D6. Once I've finished my selection, I can let go. I've just made a selection of this rectangular range. Now any formatting I perform will apply to all the cells that are highlighted. Now there are a couple of really quick ways we can format this with dollar signs and with comma separators. I'm going to move my cursor up to the dollar sign that you see here in the home ribbon. Now notice before I click the dollar sign, the pull down just above this says the format that's selected. Right now it just says number, but now I'm going to click this dollar sign once and oh, look at that. This is referred to as the accounting formatting option. In fact, we see the word accounting now in that pull down menu just above this that used to say number. We see a dollar sign which is left justified. The numbers themselves are right justified. We've got two decimal places. Now, if you decide you want the dollar signs to hug the numbers just to their left, you can select this formatting pull down menu that says accounting pull down and you see that there's an option in here that says currency. Let's select that. Now we've got the dollar signs just to the left of the numbers. It's just a matter of preference. I'm going to go back and click on this dollar sign to return to the accounting format. But you know what? I don't want the decimals to be here. So I'm going to move my cursor over to this icon right here and take a look at what's inside of it. It shows dot zero zero and then an arrow that shows a dot zero. That means it's going to be reducing each time you click it the decimal point by one decimal value. So we'll click it once. We go from two decimals to one decimal. Click it again. We go from one decimals to no decimals. The one on the left will add decimals. So you can give that a try. But let's go back to no decimals. Now what if you're not in the United States? And what if these numbers are in euros? Well, what you could do is you can click on this little pull down menu, which is right next to the dollar symbol, and you can select Euro. Look at that, the dollar sign is replaced by the Euro symbol. Click that little pull down again. Look at some of these other options that you have in here. Let's select Swiss francs, and oh, look at that, the symbol for Swiss francs is CHF, but that shows up to the right of the number. Looking good. In case you're curious, the CH stands for Switzerland's other moniker, which is the Confederatio Helvetica. We can click the dollar sign to go back to the accounting format, and if you want to look at even more currency formats, we can click and pull down this menu one more more time and select more accounting formats. That'll open up this format cells dialog. Now on the left hand side you have different format categories. If you click on currency and then pull down the symbol you can see lots of nations listed in there. Feel free to scroll through. I always find it so interesting to discover national currency symbols that I wasn't aware of. They've even got Bitcoin in there. And we'll talk more about this in a future lecture. If we select the general format on the left and then click OK, that'll get rid of the comma separators and any decimal points. So again, lots of different options in here. I'm going to go back to the accounting format, but I'm going to get rid of the decimals. Now another thing you'll note, Excel will align text to the left, but the numbers are right justified by default. But maybe you want to change this. Perhaps you want to right align the text in the column headers B, C, and D so they look like the numbers below them. So you'll see a number of the different formatting icons up top look just like the ones that you might be familiar with in a word processor, and they function the same way. So if I highlight from B1 to D1, and if I want to right justify these titles, I can just click on this icon that shows lines aligned to the right, and we see that the text moves over to the right. Now let's also look at how you can resize columns. So I'd mentioned before that the cursor changes shape based on the context of what can be accomplished. So let's move the cursor right on the line that separates the lettered columns. So I'm right on top of the line that separates it's the C column from the D column. Notice how the cursor looks. It's a thick black line. There are arrows pointing to the left and to the right. When the cursor's this shape, it means if you click and drag, you can resize the column. 
And if I hold down my mouse on this line and I drag to the right, I'm widening the column. I can do the same thing holding down the mouse and dragging to the left. I can shrink the column that way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag to the left. So I'm going to shrink the column so that the width is so narrow you can't see the values that are inside of the cells. Now look at what shows up just a bunch of number signs. So if you ever see a bunch of number signs like this, it just means the cells aren't wide enough to show what's inside them. Now here's a neat trick to auto resize the cell width. Just move your cursor to the line in between the lettered columns and then double click. You'll see the width snaps to a width that's perfectly sized, no larger than the width needed to show the largest cell value in that column. Slick. Now even cooler, this resize trick can apply to a much larger selection. I'm going to select all of my columns. I'm going to click right on my D, hold down the mouse, drag over to column A. You can see how that I've selected all of these columns. And now I'm going to double click on the line between A and B. And look at that. All of the columns are now perfectly sized to the minimum width needed to show the largest value in that particular column. Very nice. Now let's say you wanted to get rid of all formatting and start again from scratch. What you could do is you could highlight all of your cells. So I've selected from D6 up to A1. And now in the Home tab, look over here on the right hand side. This icon is supposed to look like an eraser. That's called the Clear icon. And if you click on the little pull down menu, these are options you could use to clear out the contents of your selection. Clear All will get rid of everything. I'm going to select Clear Formats and we can see all of the formatting that I just did goes away. Now here's a quick challenge for you. See if you can recreate the format shown here. Make the numbers in accounting format with US dollars, no decimals, but use commas as separators, bold face the column headers and the row headers, auto fit the column width, and write justify the values in B1 through D1. Give it a shot, and if you run into any trouble, you can rewind and remind yourself how to get it done. Now when you're done, don't forget to save your work. You can click on the save icon in the quick access toolbar up here. You can type Command S if you're on a Mac or Control S if you're in Windows. Windows users also have a file tab with a save command on it to the left of the home tab. Mac users don't have a file tab, but you can just go under the file menu and select save. Now after you've saved, your professor might ask you to save your work under a different name and submit it. If so, you can just use the save as command. Just make sure that you pay attention to your save location so that you can properly find and submit your work. Well, folks, in this brief video, we covered a pretty solid introduction to basic cell formatting. We covered formatting a range of cells, selecting non-adjacent cells, simple cell formatting, including bold as well as left and right alignment, we covered the accounting and currency formats, the number and general formats. We used comma separators. We added and removed decimals. We worked with currency symbols. We learned to use clear for clear formatting. We learned to recognize columns that were too narrow to show available data. And we learned to resize column width, including how to auto fit columns to the minimum width required to show all data. Now, I hope you feel good about the skills you're acquiring. Keep at it and be excellent.